a lot of the shows are very much like chapters. I don't see them as just exhibitions. It's, it's a way of trying to understand um, or having an overview uh, of the processes that have been going on for the past, uh, let's say, two years. Um, and it's the final chapter or it's the ending chapter of the work in relation to the notion of the, the shine or the, 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 the ideas I have around this thing of the resources in Namibia, visiting Namibia and the Sumeb Hill and looking at also the way we are transforming the materials we're using and how we are using that in different elements. I don't know if it's the end, but in a way it feels like it's bringing together all these chapters. And so In Pursuit of Bling starts looking at it from the early times of conquering and the pursuit and the quest for something to shine, something to make things better within whatever context it is in. Um, the first textile piece talks about uh, transformation, no, discovery, mm. and the second one talks about the, dis the transformation. Mm. The transformation is also seen on other tables through the elements that we have transformed, like, mm. so at the end we don't know anymore the, risk, the origins or the source of where things come from, mm. but we are using them. And then there's a video piece that will be shown of the performance I did in front of the Green Hill, which was a very spontaneous, everything is kind of very spontaneous act. Once in front of the Green Hill, I just decided to sing for it, to heal, like a kind of singing process to heal the space. Well, I'll just go forward. <laughs> a bit. I improvise words. It's like mala 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 kid. I put a light on you, shine shine. Then sumet meet, as you read as you meet, Scotland meet. Because these are names that were given to all these minerals. <laughs> so it's like just calling their names like that. Serucid meat, da 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 da. I put a light on you, da da. So, number 12, that is a bit darker. So, we can, can we play it in between these two colors? Colors, so that'll be number 36. What else? Oh, that's the weave, it's so exciting. Okay, I think it's okay, isn't it? It's binded together. Yes. And oh. turn it a little bit. Oh. Let's see the water. So it's this kind of duality that we also see in the work, uh, a drawing that I made in 2009 called Crisis, where you have like two um, bodies of the same kind of bodies, yeah. um, pulling on elements. And so it talks about like the, the similarities of two people maybe coming from the same area, but kind of having a thug of war over um, a certain of the same elements that they want. Um, but here in Muka, what I'm going to do is to actually have in the spaces here photographic images. In this one, we have that blue, right? The same one. But that's fine. Yeah. But here we've lost the blue. And that affects this. And that affects this, exactly. Okay, we can do the one, you're open one. Yeah, but it's the same here anyway. Yeah.
okay, this is the first time I'm really making a textile piece that has so much crazy things going on in the background. For this part, it's working quite well. And then we have to go to the next detail and work on details on details upon deeper details, but it's fine. When we look at this one here, it's the same as there, but we did not add any of that color. So now what I've done is to change that, to add more red in it. So now we see the difference here in there, and that is much more interesting. I wasn't interested in showing photographic materials to look pretty, but I'm more interested in finding a way that it goes beyond just looking like a photographic material, but it starts creating a space for reflecting on things. Having them on the textile is a different thing than just framing them and putting them on the wall. It's not just making the work, but it's also thinking of how, as a body, do I move through space. I think for me that's very interesting in exhibition making and in, in installing works or um, because I do a lot of performances, so I'm always constantly thinking of like, what are the possibilities around the piece? How do you look at something at 360 degrees, yeah. then just looking at it at frontal, where you turn into, where's the point of interest? And how mm. can you negotiate that with the people around you and the space around you? With performance, there are things that you cannot necessarily say altogether in a drawing or in a photo or, you know. I think with the performance, all the different elements kind of have a life. They start coming alive. One, two, three. That rhythm enters into your brains and you think about it. And at one point in time, you don't even think anymore. Um, you just do it. And there, the performance of the machine that transforms um, the material of what is excavated. That's the performance is really looking at machinery and really looking at the performativity of the machine, but through the body and inspired by the body. So, you know, so it's looking at all this kind of thing of labor and the loss of um, the physical body in relation to also economy and um, space. Yeah. You've learned that gesture till you become a machine. A machine that works slowly and does what it needs to do. And I think now it's, it's quite interesting the time we're living in that this, the, the results of a long-term um, impact oh. is showing its face and also the fear of emptying out of things and finishing or and so we're looking for other solutions through technology like when we talk about diamond for example um, looking at ways of creating a fake diamond uh, so we don't have to tap from the resource but still it will tap from another kind of resource so it's still a vicious circle anyway yeah.